I'm going to show you how you can set up DNS stub zones on Windows Server. So to start, I'm logged onto my primary domain controller and within Server Manager, I'm going to go to Tools and then DNS to open up the DNS Manager. Now, before we create the stub zone, it's worth knowing at a basic level how the DNS queries work. So when you submit a DNS query to the DNS server, it will look within the forward lookup zones for any matching zones, and then it will check within there for any matching records. If there are no matching zones, it will look to the forwarders that are set up within the DNS server, and then it will forward the query to one of those DNS servers. However, let's say there's a domain and you want to send it directly to their name servers, you can do that by creating a stub zone. So if we right click forward lookup zones and then press new zone, within the wizard, we can select stub zone. As this is an Active Directory domain, we can store the zone within Active Directory and then press next. We can select that we want to replicate it to all DNS servers running on domain controllers within this domain and then press next. Now for the zone name, this is the domain name you want to create the zone for. So normally you would do an internal domain name. So like you do company2.local or .int or whatever another Active Directory domain is that you want to set up this zone for. However, I don't have another Active Directory domain, so I'm just going to use a public domain name, which is fine. Then press next. Now you want to put the IP address or the domain name of one of their DNS servers. So for Google, we'll use ns1.google.com. And then we'll just remove the IPv6 variant. So we've just got the IPv4 address. Then we can press next and then finish. And then now we've got our stub zone. So if you come to the zone, you'll probably see zone not loaded. And if you just leave it a few seconds and then refresh, and you may have to right click and then transfer from master. And this will force it to refresh and get all the latest records. Now that's refreshed, we can see that it's pulled down three different types of record. We've got our start of authority, which is the SOA record for the domain. It's also pulled down all of the name servers for their domain. And then it's got a corresponding A record for each of those name servers. Now those are the only three types of records that can be hosted within a stub zone. So you can't actually create any more records. You can't create any TXT records. All it does is use this forward lookup zone to send the query to one of these name servers. So now any DNS queries for google.com will match this forward lookup zone they won't get forwarded like any other external query to the public forwarders. They'll get picked up by this forward lookup zone and then sent to one of these name servers. Now, if you get a red X here and right clicking and pressing transfer from master doesn't work and you're continuing to get errors, it's likely because if it's trying to replicate a local Active Directory domain in the properties of the domain, if you come to zone transfers, allow zone transfers is probably disabled so it's getting blocked that way so just make sure if you are getting errors make sure allow zone transfers is enabled for the domain you're trying to copy and also what you can do is if you come to the event viewer under applications and services you can select dns server and then if you refresh this will give you all the events for the dns server and it will give you a critical alert which will tell you why there are errors. Now, the reason you would use a stub zone over a conditional forwarder, for example, if I just create a new forwarder here for say google2.com, and then we'll send it to ns1.google.com, and then we'll remove the IPv6, and then press okay. So even though this is now looking at 216.239.32.10, which is the same record that is in our forward lookup zone, if, for instance, Google change this IP address for this NS1 A record, this forwarder won't update. This will get stuck on this IP address, and then we'll have to come in and manually update it. However, as it's, this is a stub zone, this will automatically keep getting refreshed. So if Google change any of these IP addresses, it will automatically update our DNS records and won't break our DNS resolution. So that's how you can set up a DNS stub zone to forward queries to the domain's name servers directly.